Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to Organic Chemistry. We've been working on Organic Chemistry for a couple of days now, and at the moment we're going through exam paper questions on Organic Chemistry. So, um, yeah, I think that the best thing to do with Organic Chemistry is always to study the work, make sure you understand, and then do lots of exam paper questions. Okay, so before we do that, I want to show you guys how to enroll, because as I mentioned yesterday, um, I have my own matric students who um will want will very very conscientiously write down all the details and everything else and then just before prelims they'll go ma'am what was that you were saying about we could find all the information on the internet how do we get there again and i pull my hair out so i know you guys okay you have to have to have to have to enroll into the grade 12 science class you need to do this so that you have access to all the stuff that we need and don't just wait till prelims and then have a panic attack okay so what do you need to do you need to go find your go to your browser whether it be chrome or edge or firefox or whatever you're using and you type in to enable.org okay it's that there to enable Dot org. You don't even have to type in the www, it helps, but you don't have to. Okay, and you'll get to this landing page. If you've registered, awesome. If you haven't, you need to fill in your first name, your last name, your email address, click the register and go through the motions, okay? It's not just good enough to register, okay? You have to log in and enroll, okay? That's what you need to do now. So if you've already registered, awesome, well done, very proud of you. But now you've got to go log in. So you've got to go back to this landing page and then you click, you put in your email address and your password. And if you click them, remember me, then it's awesome. You don't ever have to remember that password again. And click on the log in and you get to this page. Now, if you've never been this far before, you will have three buttons. You'll have choose subject, progress and results, and to enable help online. And you won't have this lot, okay? You click the big red button that says choose subject and you'll come up to a page which has got all the subjects that Turnable has got content on. Okay, it's lots and lots of content available for you. But at the moment, we're talking about these lessons. Okay, so you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down until you get to physical science, choose grade 12 at the moment. Okay, and you click on it and you enroll. Okay, and it'll kick you back to this screen, but now you'll have a pretty blue block. Okay, that says physical science grade 12. Awesome, wonderful. Why do you want this? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The first reason is that, for example, when I'm finished doing the organic chemistry section, I'm going to set up an live assessment. And then when you've enrolled in the class, you'll be able to see the live assessment and you will be able to do it. An idea behind that is that I get an idea of what you guys are understanding and not understanding about organic chemistry. So, for example, it could be that you're understanding everything to do with bonding and reactions, but not so much about the intermolecular forces and vapor pressure etc etc so that is what i will get i'll get from the live assessments and i don't get a specific name or number i just get oh 50 percent of the class have no idea that an increase in intermolecular forces causes a decrease in vapor pressure and why okay for example so now oh i need to go teach that okay the live assessments are multiple choice not multiple guess please note and on top of that, um, they're quick. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Let me go back. Okay. Moving on. Next, if you, that's not moving on at all. There we go. If you go to upcoming events, okay, this is what you'll need to get to if you want to view the live session. Okay. So you click the upcoming events and you come to this page here and you find the great tool physical science for your day and you click the view event and you'll get to this pop-up. Now, the cool thing about the pop-up is that it gives you information of what we'll be covering during that day, okay? So, for example, we're doing organic chemistry um, exam paper questions, so that's what we're covering. If you just wanted to see that, then wonderful, you click OK, but if you actually want to go to the session, you click the Open Live TV link, and you'll get to a page that includes this. Now, you have the option to have the yes, open feed into new tab. You, I would click that personally because it makes the screen that you're watching on bigger, but you don't have to, okay? But it is nicer. There's also this message studio button, which I'll talk about in a second, okay? But to join the event and watch the less session or the lesson, you actually need to click the big green button that says join the event. Not this, you're not a team member, okay? If you click that and you're not a team member, it doesn't do anything. You have to click join the event, okay? When you click that, you come across this screen. 
Okay, now let's talk about this message studio button. If you're watching this live, then you can message me, which is awesome because you can respond to the stuff I'm teaching. Or if, for example, you want me desperately to do, do like I've had a request now to do redox and redox, redox reactions in the next, after I've done the organic chemistry. So that's what we're starting next. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so if you guys have a section that you really want to go through, you're welcome to do that to message me if you've got exam paper questions that you want to go through that's fine too um, or if you want to respond if I've made a mistake and I'm sitting here staring at the screen going why is this not working and you're going uh, Candice 2x plus x is 3x not 3x squared for example then feel free to message me okay the whole point about this is it's supposed to be a two-way thing okay but the problem is well it's not really a problem you can also watch a recording of the video. So if you've got better things to do on a Friday afternoon or you would rather watch this at 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning because that's when you study your best. Okay, I don't understand people like that, but there are lots of people like that. That's awesome. Then fine, go do it. Okay, but the problem is you can't message me. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm in my bed. Okay, so you can't message the studio if you're watching a recording, but you can do it if you're watching this live. Right, so let's continue. So we've got the organic chemistry and we've been going through the exam papers and we got as far as looking at this exam paper question and then we stopped. That was yesterday. So now we're going to continue going through this exam paper question today. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So the first thing it says is consider the incomplete equation for the two reactions below. The incomplete equations for the two reactions below. So it says X represents organic product formed in reaction one. Okay, now they tell you it's an organic product. Okay, that's important, which is a substitution reaction. It's nice that they tell you that it's a substitution reaction here. Substitution reaction. In reaction two, X is the reactant. So they take this and go wee into there and they do something with it with concentrated sulfuric acid. There's a hint, hint, hint. I'm really hoping you're getting the hint and you're getting out water. So I'm really hoping that you're seeing that something must be happening over there. Okay, it says write down the type of substitution reaction that takes place. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Do you agree that we've got a strong base which means that we're getting some hydroxyl out of some sort, okay? And <clears throat> there's a hint here. We've got some reaction X plus Y is using concentrated sulfuric acid is going to give me this thing plus water. So I'm thinking that this is possibly a sterification. I don't know any other product, anything else that gives you sterification with, a, with an addition reaction. Okay, so... If I look at this, let's write it out. Do you agree you've got C dash C? There's five hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five. And we had a bromine. We end up with a sodium bromide, which means we've taken this bromine away. And there's a strong a base, which means there was a sodium hydroxide here. Okay, there was a sodium hydroxide. Just a second, I'm going to cough. Just wait. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got a sodium hydroxide here. The sodium has been taken up. What's left is the hydroxyl. So we've got hydrolysis happening here. This is hydrolysis. And we're getting out an alcohol. Yay, we're getting out an alcohol. So the substitution reaction that's occurring there is hydrolysis. Okay, two reaction conditions. Well, usually when you have hydrolysis, the reaction conditions are obviously that we need heat and we need the strong base, which I've kind of told you already. Okay, so there you go. And the IUPAC name of compound X, let's think about it. What do we got? We got two carbons and we got an alcohol. So two carbons and alcohol, the two carbons is S. Uh, no, there we go. And you don't have to tell where the hydroxyl group is because there are only two carbons. Now it says, consider reaction two, write down the type of reaction that takes place. I've already done it, it's a sterification. 
okay? Why? Because we've got our alcohol, we are adding something to it in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, which I know is not just an, um, a catalyst, but a dehydrating agent. We're getting out water and this thing here. So there we go. Now it says we need to write out the structural formula of compound Y. Okay, so let's think about this. The X is ethanol, it's got two carbons in, okay? So if we have to write it out, we've got C dash C, this is H, 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 O dash H, doesn't matter, and H. Actually, let's make it easier for you guys to understand and let's swap these. That's O dash H and this is H, right? And added to that is something, but it's going to have a hydroxyl group on it as well and a C double bonded O and something else. We don't know, maybe, maybe not, we're not sure. One, two, three, at least something else, maybe something else. Okay, we don't know if it's hydrogen or whatever. And what do we get out? We get out three carbons. One, two, three. We're getting out three carbons. Okay, so we're getting out of O dash C. So if we're getting out three carbons, this has to be a hydrogen and this has to be methanoic acid. Methanoic acid. Okay, how do I get that? Well, we started with two carbons because this was my ethanol. Okay, I ended with three carbons. Knowing this process, do I add or lose carbons? So therefore, my end product's got three carbons, which means I'm adding one carbon from the oic acid, the carboxylic acid. And then this would be H, H. This is just writing this out, just to prove it to you. That's H, 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 double bonded O, H, one, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, so there you go. So that's the structural formula of compound Y. And okay, that's the structural formula of compound Y. And the IUPAC name of the organic product. Um, oh, do they want, the, they want the organic name of this product? Okay, the IUPAC name of the organic product. Well, we had ethanol, so this is gonna become ethyl. And remember I explained to you how ethanol becomes ethyl. And methanoic acid becomes the methano eight because remember i said to you that what happens is by losing this hydroxyl group it goes from being an alcohol to an alkyl group so therefore it's ethanol goes to ethyl the methanoic acid loses its hydrogen to end in oxygen so therefore it becomes methanoic acid goes to methanoate okay right now it says the table shows the data collected in three organic compounds okay with different functional groups, different, okay? This is CH3CH3, CH3, so that is an L. Okay, do we agree? This is CH3CH2OH, so that's an alcohol. This is CH3COOH, so that's a carboxylic acid. And what is common about them? Do you see that this has got two carbons? The formula C2H6, okay? That's C2H whatever, and this is C2. So do you agree the number of carbons in the main chain remain the same, okay? The functional groups are changing, but the but the number of carbons in the main chain is staying the same. Okay, and let's look at the melting points. We're going from minus 183.3 up to 16.6. So do you see the carboxylic acid's got the highest melting point? It says name the following in this investigation, the independent variable, the dependent variable, the control variable. Okay, remember this, okay? But the easiest way to remember it, if you want to, is Y is equal to MX plus C. I find a lot of students struggle to remember which is the independent and which is the dependent variable. So what I tend to do is revert back to maths and I go, okay, fine, if you have this, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and this is a straight line graph. Do you agree that y is dependent on x? y is dependent on x, so y is the dependent variable, okay? So similarly, the dependent variable is dependent on the x, the independent variable. So the independent variable is the one we change. This is what we're changing. And what are we changing? We're changing the functional group. We're changing the functional group. 
Okay, what is the dependent variable? That's what we measure. The dependent variable is what we outcome. And that is what we measure. And in this case, it is the melting point. And guys, I can write m dot point. You guys have to write at the whole melting point. Okay, if you write m dot point in your exams, you're going to get it wrong. Okay, your teacher doesn't know what, what you mean by m dot point pt. Okay, so and the control variable, we've already discussed the control variable. What did we keep the same? Do you agree that we kept the carbon chain length the same? So what is the control variable? The carbon chain chain length. That is the same the whole way through. Now it says write down the molecular series to which compound C belongs. Oh, I've already done this. So the molecular series to which compound C belongs is the carboxylic acid. So again, great tools, what I'd like to suggest to you is when you are in your exams and you're using your reading time, and I say you use your reading time, don't put your head down on the desk and get an extra 10 minutes of snooze time. I actually want you to use your reading time. Um, and then what I want to do is look at this and see you can answer these questions without even realizing that you've done it. So, for example, I went through the information that they gave us and I looked at this and I went, oh, look, that's an alkane, that's an alcohol, that's a carboxylic acid. So when we get to the bit where it says write down the molecular series, I've already done it in my head. And you can save a lot of time, and a lot of stress by doing that during your reading time so that when you get to the actual question, it might be this might be the last question you do, depending on how you do your exam paper. And you might think, because you might think, oh, well, organic chemistry is the easiest bit for me. You're running out of time at the end of the exam paper. So then you might get a bit of a flap. Rather just go through it, okay? And when you're reading through it, you can answer these questions in your head. Okay, now it says write down the molecular series. It's obviously carboxylic acid, so we don't have to do that. Then it says write down the general formula of compound A. Well, compound A is an alkane, so therefore you should know it's CNH. 2n plus 2. Now it says describe the trend in melting points from A to C as shown in the table. So do you agree our trend is that the melting points are increasing as we change the functional group? Okay, so they are dependent on the functional group and the melting points are definitely increasing. Now to explain this trend in question in the question above may reference to intermolecular forces and energy. Now grade 12, if they say make reference to a specific thing and you don't make reference to, reference to it in your answer, then you're being silly because then you're not going to get the marks. Okay, so what did we say? We already noticed that what are we changing? We're changing the functional group and what is it affecting? It's affecting the melting point. So what we could say basically is that we notice that alkanes, which have got very, and I'm just going to do it in point form, but you guys would obviously have to write this in a proper sentence. They've got very weak London forces. And by the way, grade 12, if you decide that you can answer this question just by referring to IMF, as in intermolecular forces and write IMF or intermolecular forces, then just no, you know, you actually have to be specific. When they say make reference to intermolecular forces and energy, they're not saying you must just write IMF or intermolecular forces. You must be specific. You must say that alkanes have got very weak London forces. Okay, therefore they've got um, a very low melting point. Why? Because there is little energy required to um, break the forces between them. Then you can say, well, then you've got an alcohols. The alcohols have got an hydroxyl group, so they have got hydrogen bonding. They've got a hydrogen bonding, which have got um, therefore, they've got a higher melting point, and therefore, they've got more energy is required to break the 
forces between them. Then finally, you've got the carboxylic acid. And you can see that they've got um, double bonded OOH. Now, there are two things you can say. One is that they've got two times hydrogen bonding occurring between the molecules. Also, they've got the most, they've got the largest molecular mass. So they have got both the hydrogen bonding and they've got the London forces happening for them because London forces increase with larger molecular mass. If they've got the highest melting point because they need the most amount of energy to remove, I mean not to remove, to break the forces. Okay, you get it. Okay, so please don't be shy to write stuff like this. And obviously, like I've said to you, grade 12s, you cannot, 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 cannot just write down um, your, you cannot just write down point form like I've done. You obviously need to write in full sentences, okay? But those are the points. And if this is the last question you're doing in the exam paper and it's worth six marks or seven marks, don't just leave it out If you because you're thinking, oh, I don't have time to write full sentences. Then do the point form, okay? But seriously, we can find, we can see when this child is doing the last question. Okay, so don't do that, okay? Unless you really, really have to. Right now. Another question, and this one is again about intermolecular forces. The reason I'm talking about this so much is because of the fact that um, it's a typical exam paper question. They like asking it, and there's the last two, three questions. Okay, so I'm hoping that we have time to work through all three of these questions, and then we can start with Redox on Monday. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, so it says, a learner conducts a scientific investigation to compare the boiling points of organic compounds to different homologous series. Same type of question we just done. Okay, but they've got propen 1 ol. Okay, let me just write this down. They've got propen 1 ol. They've got ethanoic acid and they've got propanel are used in this investigation. His results are shown in the table below. So you've got compound A, B and C. Hmm. Okay. So propan 1 ol has got an alcohol. Okay. So it has got definitely hydrogen bonding happening. Okay. Propanel has got a double bonded O. So yes, it can have hydrogen bonding happening between the molecules. Okay. And ethanoic acid has a Q. Okay. So yes, it has actually got two times hydrogen bonding. Remember I showed this to you. Um, so for example, your propanol, propan 1 ol, you'd be carbon, 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 hydroxyl and then you'd obviously need another yeah hydrogen with an hydroxyl sticking out to cap so that's only got one hydrogen bonding a possibility so in other words we could have something coming along here another one okay let me explain better sorry i'm in my own little element okay let me explain bit better Wee. okay um pen so, for example, with propan 1 ol, it's carbon, 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 oxygen dash hydrogen. So, what's going to happen is this hydrogen is going to get close to um, the oxygen on another molecule. Okay, so that is why you get hydrogen bonding. With ethanoic acid, you've also got a double bonded O. So, this oxygen can get close to another hydrogen, and this hydrogen can get close to another oxygen. And propanel only has propanel, propanel ketone. Propanel is an aldehyde. Okay, but that's fine. Um, which means it has, I don't know why I raised that, um, 
which means it's got a double bonded over here, which means that this oxygen is available to go hydrogen bonding. Okay, so now you know what's going on with those. Now it says, for the investigation, name the independent variable and the dependent variable. And again, the independent variable is the one that we change and the dependent variable is the one that we measure. So the independent variable in this one, again, is going to be the functional group, the functional group. Okay, and the dependent variable again is gained in this case, it's the boiling point. The one that we're measuring is the boiling point. Okay, now it says, will the vapor pressure of propanol be lower or higher than the vapor pressure of propan 1R? Explain your answer by referring to the type of intermolecular forces present and the energy. Hmm. Okay, so they want to know basically what is which one's going to be bigger. You've got propanol, 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 which is C dash C dash C double bonded O, and then they want propan 1O, propan 1O, which is C dash C dash C. That's an OH. And then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's just write out the formula for this. Do you agree that's C3H one, two, three, four, five, six, O? Whereas this is C3H one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, O. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm right. <clears throat> So do you see that these are very similar, except for the fact that this has got a, more hydrogens than this one? Okay, which we expected because that double bonded O kind of messes things up. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, I'm right. Okay, right, right. So it says which one will have the vapor pressure will be lower or higher than the pressure of this. Okay, so let's talk about um hydrogen bonding who do you think is going to win you've seen that we've got hydrogen bonding on both of these propan 1l and propanol so we know that both have got hydrogen bonding okay but but i would say that propan 1l propan 1l has got oh has got higher molecular mass, slightly higher, but higher molecular mass, right? And if that's the case, then we know that it's also going to have stronger London forces than propanol. Okay, propanol, propanol, which means that it because it's got stronger forces, it is going to have lower vapor pressure. So it says, will the vapor pressure of the propanol be lower or higher? It's going to be higher. So the propanol is going to propanol is going to have higher vapor pressure. Why? Because it's got weaker um, London forces. Okay. Therefore, requires less energy to evaporate. Okay, understand. Okay, now it says we need to identify the following. Compound A, compound B, compound C. Okay, so our options are propan 1L, ethanoic acid, and propanol. Now, ethanoic acid is C2, well, let's just think about it, C dash C, double bonded O dash O dash H, and that's a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. So that is going to be C2, H1234, and then O2. Okay, the highest boiling point has to be ethanoic acid because of the fact that it's got this two times hydrogen bonding occurring. Not only that, but it's got two oxygens, so therefore it is way heavier than the other two. So therefore, compound C has to be the, compound C with the highest boiling point has to be ethanoic acid. I would then say that compound B, which has got the slightly, which is the middle one, would be your propan 1R. 
one O, and then obviously compound A is the propanal. Okay. Oopsie. Then it says, will the boiling point of propanol butan one butan one all butan one all be higher or lower than the boiling points of propan one all? Answer with referring to intermolecular forces. And the answer is yes, the butan one all will be a higher. You can't just write yes, you need to actually say if it's higher or lower. The, will the boiling point of butanol, it will be higher than the boiling point of propanol. Why? Because, because it has a longer chain, because it's got a longer main chain, it has got um, stronger London forces and therefore um, a higher boiling point okay on that note let me just make it let me just point something out to you and i'm just going to raise everything if you miss something yeah go watch the recording okay you need to understand something they love asking you either to compare so they might give you um a compound is this a compound like it'll be methanol ethanol propanol and butanol and they might give you here yeah, the boiling points okay and if for example let's just pretend okay let's say that your ethanol boiling point is one then this would be two three and four for example okay just giving you something to work with okay and then they say to you why is the butanol got a greater boiling point than methanol ethanol and propanol okay what you need to say then is you need to realize that all of these have got hydrogen bonds so all the compounds okay have hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonding so that doesn't come into play as to why the butanol has got a small higher boiling point than methanol for example but 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 since i don't know butanol let's compare butanol with ethanol since butanol has a longer main chain it has stronger London forces, London forces, therefore forces, I don't know why it does this, therefore higher boiling point. Okay, do you understand? Whereas if these were different, like yeah, then you can compare hydrogen bonding versus London forces, etc. So if it's the same thing, okay, if they're all alkanes, all alkenes, whatever, then you are comparing like with like, you're comparing the, the fact that they've got longer chains, okay, even though they've all got hydrogen bonding. And you need to mention that in your explanation, you need to say, I noticed that they, I know that they've all got hydrogen bonding, but since butanol has got the longer main chain, it has got stronger London forces and therefore the boiling point is a bit uh, higher. Okay, I don't stand. Right, now it says, okay, now I took these, this question and this question out of the same exam paper. And the reason I did was because I, I thought it was a very nice overview question. The two of them together make a really nice overview question of everything to do with organic chemistry that you should have learned. I mean, obviously there's other things, but it does well. Okay, so let's get started. It says, um, let's pick a color. Let's go for purple. It says, letters A to H in the table represent eight organic compounds. Okay, so we've got A, which has got an hydroxyl group, so we already know that that's an alcohol. We've got this thing here, which has got a double bonded O on the end, so it's an aldehyde. Okay. This thing here we need to draw out, but it doesn't seem to have anything other than methyl groups on it. So that's either an alkane or alkyne. That's a hydrocarbon for sure. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to just... Sorry. This is obviously a haloalkane with a methyl group. This is a carboxylic acid. This thing, yeah, we're going to have to draw out to see what that is. But again, there are nothing else other than carbons and hydrogens. Okay. Ditto, yeah. And this is a ketone. Okay. 
So now let's see what they're asking us. They say the compound with a carboxyl group is a functional group. The compound with a carboxyl group is a functional group. And the carboxyl group is a C double bonded O. So therefore it is compound B. Oh, and guys, please be careful of this. Even if you go name them, okay, so you know that this is 1, 2, diamethyl, whatever, whatever. Don't go around do writing that. Write down, if they say write down the letter, write down the letter. Because they get a memo to mark to, and it drives them insane. Trust me, I've done this, I've done the marking. It drives one insane when one is marking to a memo that goes, goes A, C, D, B, whatever. And suddenly some child writes propanoic acid, and then you've got to go look and see where propanoic acid is, and if it's a B or or a D or what it is. So write down the letter if they ask for a letter. Okay, which is an alkene? Okay, so yes, there are all these horrible things here, but we know that the formula for an alkene is CNH2N. <clears throat> so all we need to do now is go count. Okay, so let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's eight carbons, C8. Hydrogen, that three times two is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, that's nice. So C is your alkene. Your aldehyde, we've already said, is B. Okay. Oh, do you know that this could have been. Just a second, let me check something. Box of group, there's no. Acid, yeah, no. Um, it could, this compound of the carboxyl group is a functional group. Could have also been H. Okay, because of the ketone. Okay, a saturated hydrocarbon. Saturated means it has to be an alkane, and therefore we know the formula CNH2N plus two. So now we need to go look for saturated alkanes. So we need to count. So again, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's C eight. H is three, four, five. Okay, wait. Three, four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. H fourteen. Hmm, that's ten minus two. Okay, let's look at this one. This is going to be C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, again, that there is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, yay, so the answer is G. Now it says two compounds are functional isomers of each other, write down the IUPAC name, Oh, two compounds that are functional isomers of each other. Um, okay, let's have a look at this. 4 methyl pentane to own. I'm kind of going with that for the simple reason that um, this is a ketone, this is an aldehyde, and isomers are the same number of carbons and hydrogens are different, and oxygen is just different structures or whatever. So 4 methyl pentane it means that we're going to have six carbons at least. So let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome, and we've got the double bonded O. We need to draw this out to see if it's going to count the same number of hydrogens. So pentan to O is going to be C two three four five six. Pentan to O means we've got a double bond in the O. Methyl means there's a methyl group one two three four on the fourth carbon, and then it's one two three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm, maybe I counted wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so it's not that. Interesting. One, two, three, four. Hmm. In fact, I'm missing one here, so that's 14. Okay, so those two aren't functional isomers of each other. So then let's look where else there could be a functional isomer. Um, 
It has to be those two because this is C8H14, this is C8H16. Propanoic acid has got three carbons, so it can't be ethanol. 1,2-dibromomethylbutane has got bromines in it, and that's not going to work. So it has to be these two. So I need to work out why I'm getting this wrong. So it says 4 methyl pentan to own. Well, let's just count this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, that'll be why. Okay, so maybe I must learn to count. So, um, okay, problem solved. So yes, they are. <laughs> structural functional isomers of each other. How do I know that? Because of the fact that there are one, two, three, four, five carbons in the main chain, five for pentan to own. There is a double bonded O on the second carbon and a methyl group, and that counts to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yay! So they are both C, five, H, twelve, O. Okay, so therefore it is letters B, and H. Now it says write down the IUPAC name of compound B. Well, you can see that it's an aldehyde with the main chain with the double bonded O in it. Okay, and there's a methyl group here, and you always have to count from the side that's closest to the functional group. So we count one, two, three, four, five. So do you agree that's pent and an aldehyde is pentanel? So it's going to be pentanel. And then you're going to tell them there's a methyl group on carbon 3. So 3 methyl. Okay. Then compound F. Okay. You and me need to redraw on that. Okay. So what I'd like to suggest you do is we're kind of running out of time now. So what I'd really like to suggest you do is that you guys screenshot this or pause it and try the rest of this question for yourselves. Um, otherwise, just wait and come back on Monday and we'll finish this question and the other two and then we're going to move on to Redux. Have a wonderful weekend. Cheers.